They call Halios the Rolex of micro brands. Is that because they're the best of the best? Or is that because they're overhyped, overpriced, and impossible to buy? Let's find out. Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. First Halios Info review on the channel and I must admit, I am quite excited. Small Canadian micro brand, they have been in operation now for just over a decade and have drifted towards 60s style retro dive watches. They are of course by no means the only micro brand making 60s style retro dive watches, but they have a fantastic reputation for customer service and for the quality of their products. I didn't just buy this one, it is kindly on loan to the channel from Gary from Birmingham. Big shout out to you, Gary. He is a fellow Brit who is enjoying the palm trees and swimming pools of Sydney. He also loaned me a second watch. I'm not gonna tell you what it is, but it might be a Grand Seiko. Stay tuned for a review of that one in a couple of weeks time. I'm gonna flip this review around a little bit. I'm gonna run through the basics, the dimensions and specifications very quickly at the beginning. Then I'm gonna do negatives before moving on to positives and we will hopefully establish whether they deserve that label, the Rolex of Micro brands. Let's get on with it. Indeed, let's. These have been on the market now for maybe about eight or nine months. Apparently production was slowed down by the pandemic last year. They had troubles with their bracelet manufacturer. So the first owners received the first units in around September or October last year. Nice little leatherette travel pouchy with a suede interior to keep your spare links. I've got a seven inch wrist. This one is sized now for me rather than Gary. I added two links. I still think there's enough here for about an eight inch wrist or so. 775 US dollars. I will We'll obviously leave a link to the Halios website in the description of the video. So there's certainly a skin diver thing happening in terms of the case shape, the case profile, the sizing, etc. but not really in terms of the design. It's not super retro like a lot of the other watches that I have featured on the channel, the Olek and Vice P101, the Oris Diver 65, for example, which I think are natural competitors to this one. Yeah, definitely has the skin diver sizing though. 39 mil in diameter across the bezel. However, if I show you the case in profile, you can see a distinct undercut there, narrowing down to about 35 as it sits on the wrist. 12.7 mil thick though, with a 48 lug to lug, 20 millimeter lug width, tapering all the way down to under 16, back up to 18 and a half at the clasp. Now I added in one link either side to fit me. It weighs in at 130 grams. I believe their website suggests 120. My scales suggest otherwise, they suggest 130. All stainless, 316L, case crown, unguarded vintage style crown, screw down, 200 meters of water resistance, and we have a full stainless steel bracelet with solid end links and screw links. It is a fully milled clasp as well. I will We'll come back to this clasp later on because it is a bit of a doozy. Lovely logo there, the Halios logo there. Oh, should I tell you now? No, I will come back to that a bit later on. Mostly brush finish on the case, apart from a high polished chamfered edge on each of the four lugs, and it runs all the way down and all the way along the ends of the lugs as well, which is very nice. If I show you the case in profile, it doesn't have that skin diver thing, but it has those downturned lugs that you don't often get from this style of watch. They tend to be quite flat, generally speaking. So this one, 39 says small, 48 says large, but those downturn lugs do kind of balance that out nicely. Unguarded high polished sign crown with the three crescents, which is the Halios logo, very nice there. And we have a coin edged high polished bezel. Now the bezel on this one is quite unusual. Not only is it 60 click, it is also bi-directional. The reason for that is they offer a couple of different options for the bezel and the bezel insert. Gary opted for this traveler style one with one to 11, meaning you can quickly and easily use the bezel to track a second time zone to get a read using the outer bezel rather than those indices. There is a standard dive time bezel option with 10, 20, 30, etc. But do bear in mind if you are using this one as a diver, there is always the chance you'll knock it the wrong way when you're timing a dive. I can't see too many people using their Fairwind as a hardcore dive watch though, can you? 200 meters of water resistance, screw down crown as mentioned, it is a possibility. And that is a lovely piece of double domed, box domed sapphire crystal with anti-reflective undercoating, sapphire bezel insert in this case. There is a second bezel option as well. You can opt for a stainless steel and it's not a stainless steel insert. The whole bezel is stainless steel apparently, so it looks seamless. Gary went for the sapphire and for this traveler bezel option. 
It's an all brush three link bracelet to complement the brush case. There is again a high polish chamfered edge, but we're back to brushed on the sides, which is quite unusual. And those are screw links. The case back is best described as plain, very, very plain. Screw on stainless steel with the basic minimum of text, fair wind automatic and 20 ATA, which is their way of describing 20 atmospheres. 200 meters of water resistance. Behind it though is a Salita SW220-1. That is a 26 dual hacking a hand wedding Swiss made auto running at 28,800 vibrations per hour. Apparently the Fairwind qualifies for Swiss made because the movement is Swiss and because it is cased in Switzerland. It is assembled in Switzerland. Final quality control checks are done back in Canada. For whatever reason, Halios decided they didn't want Swiss made on the dial. I'm not sure if it costs money or they realize like most of the rest of us realize that Swiss made is a bit hollow these days. They're quite open about the origin of most of the parts in their watch. They are Asian made. This is pretty much what I would be expecting from a six month old SW220, healthy amplitude and coming in just to the positive in terms of variance. All right, that's the basics then, but what am I gonna complain about? What are my moans and niggles? Well, my first complaint is, you can't actually buy one of these even if you want to. They are all sold out. The first batch gone. They're making a second batch. They're taking pre-orders for that second batch. However, I don't know when that second batch is going to be available, how many units they're going to make, or how many people are already on that pre-order list. Perhaps that's what the Rolex analogy was all about. These things are hard to buy even new. Apparently, some of the batches of previous models have sold out within minutes. So do be warned. As a consequence, the Fairwind, like the Seaforth before it, trade at a premium used. Perhaps that's what the Rolex analogy was. People can buy these and then flip them for a profit. I guess that is up to you then. Are you the type of person who is prepared to play the long game, to go on a waiting list, make a pre-order, perhaps even pay a deposit, bide your time and then wait for your watch? Or are you the instant gratification type? Do you prefer a couple of clicks of the mouse or the mobile phone and having a watch winding its way to you within minutes? If so, then the Halios is not the option for you. My second complaint involves the colors. I think Halios used to be ahead of the color curve with the Seaforth, their previous model. All I ever used to see on Instagram and elsewhere was that gorgeous pastel blue one or the bright yellow one with the color match date wheel. If you look at what Rolex did with their Oyster Perpetual range last year, they released both of those colors and they have been a massive hit for Rolex. The Fairwind is available in either this rather drab marine blue or a gray. Nice Neither of which I think particularly enhance the watch. They're not exactly wow colors, are they? I would love to see this in Tiffany blue or a yellow or an orange or a brighter color. I think it would definitely cope with that nicely. As it is, those are your choices. It hasn't stopped them selling out though, has it? My third complaint involves the bracelet clasp. I think there's just a little bit too much gap on this side. There's a little bit of kind of flex there. I'm sure they could tighten up those tolerances if they wanted to by a mil or so. And my fourth complaint involves the warranty, 12 month warranty. I complain every time I come across one of those in Microland, regardless of how good the watch is, two years should be the minimum. And, um, that's it. That is the sum total of my complaint list today. This is a fantastic little watch. It really is. It is so nicely done. Look, 775, it's not cheap. You can say, yeah, Jody, you can find a Salita 200 and a watch at $500, but you won't find the same level of attention to detail and end-to-end -end quality that is evident throughout this Halios. The Loom, for example, is outrageously good. It's one of these watches, you can see a green glow coming from it, even when you're not in a dark room, that's how good the Loom is. C3 and tons of it on the hands, the indexes, and pumped through that sapphire bezel insert. I say it time and time again, if you see bad loom on a watch, it's a sure sign that corners have been cut. Conversely, if the loom on a watch is good, chances are the quality of the rest of the watch will be good. And that is exactly what's going on with this Fairwind. Case finishing is excellent throughout. Sapphire bezel insert and a fantastic and expensive piece of box domed sapphire crystal covering that lovely dial. Like I said, it's not achingly retro. It has a modern look to it. Love the Halios logo, great print and that little triple crescent just at a slight angle there. That's how you do branding. Likewise, the Fairwind text beneath the pinion and that distinctive 20 
ATA with the T seeming to push the numeral 20 up towards the pinion just underneath it and automatic where Swiss made perhaps could perhaps should be. Lovely brushed bevel edged handset nicely in proportion to the dial as well and just a tiny bit of color from that triangular tip to that second hand there. The gray model apparently features a kind of minty green. This blue one features orange. Indices are also very nice. You have those four large batons at the 12, the 3, the 6 and the 9 that encroach on that recessed circular inner dial section. Large kind of square shaped indices everywhere else. All of them angled down towards the pinion as well. It's nicely done. It's not kitsch. It's not copying something else. It definitely has its own vibe. I talked about the bezel action earlier on, but I didn't tell you how good it is. It just feels lovely and solid and everything lines up, something that Seiko struggle to do in watches costing a lot more than this. SW200, but no ghost date position. It just goes straight to time adjust. I didn't know Salita did one without the ghost date position. I certainly haven't seen it elsewhere. Again, not for less than a grand. And let me show you some of these bracelet links again. As I said, nicely done, brushed, but with that high polish chamfer complementing the chamfer on those lugs. But they're really small and they use screws. Quite often when companies go for that style of bracelet and use screws, the screws themselves are soft. They're too small. They're very, very difficult to operate. These ones, really high quality. I had no problems resizing this. Again, evident of the quality throughout this model. And then there's the bracelet clasp. I showed you it earlier on. It is a thing of beauty. Fully milled, nice and thick, double security pushers, and obviously a milled scissor underneath. Brushed upper surface, high polished chamfered edge, and that Halios triple crescent logo there. But if I depress that triple crescent logo, oh, instant adjustment, instant mind blown. Now I have looked at a few watches that have had some form of micro adjust contained within the clasp. Christopher Ward do it, Rolex do it in terms of the glide lock, but I've never seen one do it as beautifully as this to incorporate that logo into the system. Fantastic, you get about eight mil, you get just under a centimeter of adjustment. So it looks gorgeous and it is eminently practical too. And oddly enough, with instant on the fly micro adjustment, it wears really, really well. I've got a seven inch wrist for your reference. 39 you might think is a bit small, but 48 you might think is a bit big, but because of the inverted mid link of the end link and because of the dramatic rake from those lugs, it kind of balances itself out. It doesn't wear like a small watch. It doesn't wear like a big watch. I wouldn't necessarily recommend it if you had wrists of six and a half inches or downwards, you might end up with a bit of overhang from that case though and check the light play coming off the links of the bracelet. It is spectacular. If only the dial color was a bit more spectacular itself, eh? Overhead shot, it's not a big watch, but it is still nice and legible. As I said, those hands indexes all quite well proportioned. Outside natural light, it's not a complaint, but it is an observation. There is quite a lot of light play with this one. I don't think there's a huge amount of anti-reflective undercoating on the sapphire, plus sapphire bezel inserts. You always get that kind of flecto bounce back from that particular combination. But it's definitely in keeping with the retro style overall. And once again, have a look at the light play from that bracelet outside. It is very, very lovely indeed. And looking down my wrist, you can see what I mean. Again, those downturn lugs do help. Far better than if the watch was flatter, but if you have a really small wrist, you might end up with a bit of overhang because of that 48 mil lug to lug. So the Rolex of microbrands then, well, there's certainly a lot of hype surrounding Halios. I guess videos like this don't help in that regard. Hard to buy new therefore, trade at a premium used therefore, but unlike Rolex, I think if you can buy one of these at list price, you get a great watch. You get a fantastic watch amongst the best of anything else I've reviewed at the price point. For example, I am head over heels in love with the Oris Diver 65. I have bought and sold a number of them and that saga is set to continue. But this Halios is better than the Oris on paper and in the hand in just about every single way for 500 US dollars less. That's how good it is. I just wish it was a bit more colorful. So there you have it. Congratulations, you made it all the way to the back end of the video. If you like this 1960s style dive watch but don't fancy the Halios, check out the RLG Odyssey 4 which is available in pastel blue or the Oleg and Weiss P101. Rubbish clasp, fantastic watch. Thanks for watching. I will see you all again soon.